Hello, welcome to the Dawn Jarvis Show, where our goal is to inspire you by interviewing a diverse range of visionary leaders and entrepreneurs and sharing their entrepreneurial journey. Today, we have a very special guest, Dr. Lucy Gandhi. She is a professor and a CEO of Matepa Rare Solutions. And today, we are going to learn how to be rare with Dr. Lucy. We're going to talk about believing in your potential and never giving up on your dreams. Um, when you fail, shake it off step on it and move on and just be rare. Hello Dr. Lucy, how are you today? Hello John, I'm fine, thank you and thank you so much for having me on your show, thank you so much. You are very very welcome, I'm really looking forward to our chat. Now I know that you are a very accomplished lady who's had a wide-ranging career and does a lot of things. What I usually ask our guests is how did you get to be where you are today? Well, um, well, there are some aspects I think that I, 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 this life teaches you um, that you know to be where you want to be. First and foremost, you must have some vision, um, you know, as to where you want to go. But you must also have a passion. Um, there are some aspects that you know you you, you the, the challenges that you face in life that you just have to learn how to manage those challenges. And I I faced quite a few of those in my. Um, uh, childhood especially uh, because mm -hmm. I was uh, brought up in Zambia in a very rural um, area mm -hmm. of Zambia with uh, literally, I mean, there was no way you had to walk and things like that, cross rivers, mm -hmm. uh, you know. Um, so you really have to have a certain kind of, um, you know, ability to persevere and have the passion and really want something better in life than where you are. Mm -hmm. um, among the things that, um, you know, I, I always say that, you know, you always have to believe in your potential. You always have to always think, well, wait a minute, um, is, is this the best that I can be? Or is there something better? Uh, I'm sure there's something out there better. So you, you, that, that drives you and that drove me a lot in the, the time that I was a child, uh, going to a weekly boarding school mm -hmm. uh, uh, without any amenities of the modern infrastructure. In other words, no you know, electricity, uh, no um, you know, tap water. You have to get the water from the river. Mm -hmm. You have to um, go to the um, bush to fetch firewood for yourself as a child and still cook for yourself and go to school and those things. So you, you learn a lot about you know, really um, being able to never to have to give up. You have this dream, you want to be better. And with me, another thing is my mom asked me at some point in time saying, <laughs> um, uh, how, far, what, what, how far do you want to go? I said, mom, I want to find out where school ends. I want to find out <laughs> where the school ends, yeah. So things like that. So they just, you just have to um, make sure that you know that you know, I can do better than I am and I continue persevering whatever challenges you face, you learn to bounce back and to go on and know that um, there's something in me I was not. I was made for a purpose, and not just to you know um, to be a failure. I don't think there was anybody who was ever made to be a failure. So you make mm -hmm. a choice. I don't want to fail in life. I want. I want to succeed. I want to make something of myself. I want to be able to add value. I want to be able to uh, to make a difference wherever I am. And so to do that, you know, you persevere. You, you continue at your work. Um, that's, um, that's amazing. I really love mm -hmm. what, everything that you said about mm -hmm. never giving up, never feeling inferior. Um, you know, and I love what you said. I want to see where school ends. That's amazing, isn't it? And then, and then I, I have this picture of you in a quite a rural um, area in in Africa. You you talked about that wasn't easy. That you didn't have. You didn't have the things that I am um, used to having. You know, and um, and you went from that to being the successful person you are today. How did you make that leap? You talked about vision and, you know, and you, you obviously went to university and, 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 and did something different. When did you take that first step, I guess, on, on the journey to your success? When the first time that I had to take that step was the time that... Um, like from at the beginning, you know, um, in, in my village where I was, um, you know, we had to walk for almost was it 40 to about 40 to 60 kilometers to go to school, to a weekly mm -hmm. boarding school as a child. 
and to have to take your own like if own food enough food to take you from Sunday to Friday. Mm -hmm. Friday you go back to replenish. So you you have to carry that food by yourself. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you have to, like I was saying, cook for yourself and you have to also do, you know, go to school and do extra, you know, curricular activities and all that. But there was something that really made a difference. Uh, there was a river, we call it Vemba, a mm -hmm. big, huge river that you had to cross. When, when it rains um, up somewhere there and you're in the middle, of course, the, the river was very wide. And it's still there, you know, it's, it's very wide. Mm -hmm. And so to cross it, when you reach the middle, and the water comes from, it was raining some, and it, 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 the water comes whilst you're a child, you're carrying all your you know, uh, supplies for the week. You're in the middle mm -hmm. of the river and the water comes and it sweeps you. And mm -hmm. a number of my friends died uh, oh, on that, that river. And so um, what my dad asked me to say, look, many of the people in the village are stopping their girl child from going to school mm -hmm. because they had rather you know, just keep them and they get married and then, you know, mm -hmm. other than they die, other than risk. Then my dad gave me, a, asked me a, a, a pertinent question, which I never forgot, even though I was so very young. He mm -hmm. said, I'm going to give you a choice. I know you're young, but I'm going to give you a choice. If you want to go on, you, you, you will have to take a risk. You'll have to always be uh, sensitive when you're crossing the river. You'll have to watch out if they, you think there were rains or not. You'll have to be really but if you don't want, you will stay here at home. And then he pointed at one of our aunties, our grandmother, said you will be mm -hmm. like that grandmother there, living in that hut, such the house, never, you know, just cooking and going to the whatever. And you never, you never amount to, to uh, you not, not go high in terms mm -hmm. of life. Mm -hmm. So, and you always say you want to add, help people. You cannot help people if you're also in need of that kind of help. So for you to be able to help others, you have to be better so that you can have something that you can give to them. So it's your choice. I thought about it and I said, I looked at my, grand, my grandmother and my aunt grandmother. I said, no, I think I would rather risk it at the end of mm -hmm. it all if it's going to help me to help her to be better. And this, okay, that, I, that, was the, that was a defining moment for me in my life. That's an amazing so, story. That is an amazing story. So I started story. taking risks thereafter and, you know, um, you know, because, you know, we didn't have a lot of money and all that. So my, even to go to school when I had to go to high school, let alone to university and all that, my mom had to brew some, you know, drinks to make, you know, to sell and make money for me to travel. And that's the time that when we were walking one time with my mom to go and sell something so that she can get transport money for me to go to school. That's when I said, mom, we are suffering so much. I want to know where school ends. So that's when, that is an amazing you know, story. So when amazing. I finished, when I finished um, all my degrees, you know, um, and uh, became, you know, doctor, you know, a professor, mm -hmm. and uh, first this, first that, first vice chancellor, first, my mom asked me before she passed on, say, my daughter, have you found out now where school ends? Oh, wow. I, said, <laughs> I said, mom, yes, I'm now a, 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 a PhD is the highest you can get in terms of mm -hmm. education. And professorship is the highest you can get in terms of promotion. I've reached that, but learning mm -hmm. does not stop, ma'am. I found out learning does not stop. Yes, I've found out in terms of the qualifications, but in terms of learning, I'm still learning. So she, she kind of just laughed and she just, you know, reminded me and all that. So those were some few defining moments in my life that, you know, helped me to persevere that I ended up, you know, adding value even in my village. Um, you know, and helping out in the village and all that. So it was uh, after, uh, after all these accomplishments, uh, the first person to bring any kind of uh, electricity, uh, electricity in terms of solar, it was me. I had to take some solar uh, to our village. So my, at least, <laughs> so I, you know, I, I did something that um, at least uh, my vision was kind of, you know, uh, reached. But then of course, uh, in all this, I learned to fall to fall, what to fall, and I would say, shake it off and step it on it. <laughs> so through it all, in believing in my potential, never giving up, persisting and persevering, I, I learned you know, to say that, you know, in life, you'll have challenges. What you do yes. is, when you fall, you, 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 you stand up, you shake it off, you step on it, and you move on. Like, you know, there's a story that we tell, but I, I, I'm not going to tell that story because it's a little bit long, but it's about, about <laughs> it, it, <laughs> yeah. But otherwise you just, you know, uh, you fall down, 
people will have, even when people criticize you, even when people work against you, even when situations, you don't have money, you don't have resources sometimes, you feel like giving up, you feel like, am I ever going to make anything of myself and add mm -hmm. any value to anybody? You still have to have to hold on to that dream. You still have to say, wait a minute, I may fall or I may fail, but I'm not a failure. For failing does not mean I'm a failure. I can, yes. I can, I can, I can stand up again. I can, you know, shake it off. I can continue. I can step on whatever it is that is pulling me down and move on and to my to, to, to the to the to, to my success or to my dream to reach my dream. And that's why I end up saying, just be rare in all whatever you're doing. I always say, don't, don't ever use shortcuts. Just because mm. you know, when, when when many times when you are in this difficulties you want to you know to, to do some things you know that are not, you're not supposed to do you want to allow maybe some bribery here and there you want to write maybe some you know corrupt things here and there they won't sustain you the only thing yes. that can sustain you is for you to be responsible for whatever decision you make whatever choice whatever whatever it is that you are doing so am i being responsible to myself and everybody else i'm interacting with Am I being accountable for all the resources that I trusted to me? Be it human resources, be it money, whatever resources I have. Am I being accountable to myself and everybody else, all my stakeholders, especially as an entrepreneur as well? And then, am I being relevant? Am I adding value in what I'm mm -hmm. doing mm -hmm. to another person? Because you cannot succeed without other people. You cannot, it's not possible. We always need each other for us to succeed. We need to, that's why we have got a, a philosopher of saying Ubuntu. You know, I'm only, I am because of other people and I cannot succeed. So you need to be always asking yourself, whatever I'm doing in the organization, in interacting with people at every level, am I adding value? Am I being relevant? That's the being mm -hmm. the R in the rare. And the last mm -hmm. one the, in the rare, the E, am I being ethical in my conduct? You know, mm -hmm. if you are not being ethical, if you don't have integrity, if your words and your actions are not integrated, you cannot sustain success. You can even be successful maybe for a short period of time. But eventually, sustaining that success will need you to be responsible, accountable, relevant, and ethical, hence being rare. That's why I say just be <laughs> rare if you want to succeed in life. So That's that is amazing. my short my short story. Otherwise, in many places I've been, I've practiced that. Um, when I was at the University of South Africa, we introduced a course, what we call signature course, uh, mm -hmm. which included rare values. When I was at Murungush University as vice chancellor, we incorporated that in two strategic plans that we have. So Murungush University, as they say, we, we say we are rare because uh, those are the uh, values that I also introduced there when I was vice chancellor. And so we also had a signature course. So we put a signature on our, our students when they graduate, that this student we are giving out to you is rare. We will not bribe them, corrupt them. They will be able to stand out. So that's why I said just being rare. That is also in my consultants, Mutepa Rare Solutions. And how do you help people with um, with your solutions? And just to say, before you answer that, that is amazing what you just said about, you know, how that, that built up, you know, how you came to it and how you use it and how you used it with your students and how you are using it in your in your business as well as, you know, because you're still a professor and you're still doing it, aren't you? So, yeah, so how do you help people with, with using those values? See, what I do is, among other things, I have, um, I run workshops um, on, you know, how to apply, or mm -hmm. how to apply rare values, living mm -hmm. the rare way. I do, uh, for example, even I've, um, I've developed, for example, even a program right now, women in leadership, mm -hmm. you know, breaking the ceiling, just being rare, you know, because at the end of it, or if you are, you know, um, applying, you know, those values, you cannot work against another person. You yeah. cannot want to kill another person because they are different from you. You will mm -hmm. acknowledge that different is not wrong. It may mm -hmm. be uncomfortable, but it's not wrong. It actually adds value, innovation, and creativity. You start mm -hmm. valuing other people. So even as a woman, there's nothing wrong with being a woman. I don't have to be a man to succeed. And I must know that. I must accept that. I have to break the, the, the glass ceiling. I must go on the table with my strength, not the strength of any other person, not the strength of a man. I am a woman and I've got my strength. You are a woman, we are women. So I, I try to tell people to being rare, it's one, you should accept yourself as well. It's okay for me to be me. I can add value with what I have and I can be able to help other, somebody else. I can be able to coach another person, to mentor another person, to believe in themselves. And I go into diversity as well, the diversity yes. inclusion. 
I talk about that, I write about that, and I do workshops on that as well. Going to organizations, you don't have to start, you know, working against another person, not wanting to promote them, to elevate them just because they are different from you. Color does not, color, knowledge does not have color. You know, um, you know <laughs> wisdom does not have color. It's okay to be black, to be woman, to be tall, to be short, to be white, to be whatever it is you are, it's okay. But you should not have to impose your, you know, color on another person. In fact, I always say, if you are, uh, you, you are distinguishing yourself because of your color, you want to get favors because you are, say for example, you are white, so you therefore want to get favors. What are you saying? You are saying you are not intelligent enough to make it without your color? Are you mm -hmm. saying that? <laughs> because if mm -hmm. you are saying that, that's when you talk about, say, for a white supremacy or whatever, whatever. It's mm -hmm. only if you think your color is what makes you. But if you think it's you because of who you are, then surely you should be able to accept any other person. We work yeah. with them, compete with them, add the, the, add, take their value, take their strength, and let it help your organization grow. You know, they are with their creativity, their differences, and all that. That's how we can grow as a people and as a nation and sustain our, ourselves and our futures. So that is, you know, what I, among other things, I also talk about change and transformation. You know, it's not easy to change. Yeah? When you are getting through changes, it's not easy. So all that, I talk about that as well. Uh, change and transformation. I talk about corporate governance, the importance of corporate governance and um, et cetera, et cetera. So those are some of the things that I, I talk about in terms of um, solutions and, and going forward and I've got passion for I believe that if we were rare, we would, we would really have a peaceful, not just countries, but continent as well as the whole global village. We would not be killing each other, would not be stealing from each other, would not be looking down on each other, would not be pulling other people down because of their diff they are different from us. We would be building each other up and then we'd have the best of, of, of everything that we need in our organizations at, at every level. That's amazing. So that I love that. <laughs> I love that. And you've also written a book, haven't you, on the same themes and topics? Tell us about that. Yes, yes, yes. I've read, I wrote a book, actually. That's what I started all this, because I was thinking, I was asking a lot of questions. Actually, I started questions with, excuse me, why is Africa so rich and poor? What's happening? I, mm. Those questions led me to answer, to finding an answer to say, wait a minute, I think there's something that is missing. I think it's the total leadership uh, in reading the rare, also it's, 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 it's rare leadership leading with the uh, rare total leadership, total meaning with the head, heart, and hands. So it's a rare total mm -hmm. leadership leading with the head, to, the head, heart, and hands, indicating that, you know, if you're only leading with the uh, head skills and you don't think about, you know, heart, 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 you don't have the heart skills and the hand skills, you can end up being a toxic person and you can end up being one of the most sophisticated thieves, like the people, the, the scandals we have heard of, of, mm -hmm. uh, that have brought so many countries, uh, organizations down. It's because most of those people have only got, you know, head skills. They don't have the appropriate values and character that can sustain those head skills. So you need to have to be taught to, to lead with the head, the heart and the hands, but in a responsible, accountable and an ethical way. That way, all these scandals who have had the end runs and all that would have not have been there. Would, uh, because then people would have understood that what I'm doing is wrong. I, I, I did not cover it up. I'd be as, I'm as well, if I make a mistake, I bring it up before everybody. We talk about it and we see how we can go forward instead of covering it up at the expense of another person and you end up destroying the institution and the countries that you lead. So, mm -hmm. so that's how I ended up writing this book. And um, I'm currently writing a second edition. I think it's really interesting. Cool. <laughs> That'd be really good. So the book's available but on it, Amazon. On the, and, yes, it is. It is and, um, available on Amazon. I'll, and I'll put a link in the show notes for anybody who is interested in that. So you, yes. you've had an amazing career. You are very inspirational and very motivational. And um, one of the things that I ask all of my guests is how when doing all these things when being driven to do so many things you're clearly a very driven lady you've accomplished a lot and you share you teach and you're still you know you're still educating people you write books you write an up update how do you both stay focused positive and productive and also how do you manage your health and well-being while you are doing all the things that you do well, the, in terms of the focus, I think it's the passion that I have. When I see people out there, you know, um, you know, being self-destructing sometimes and destroying other people, destroying institutions, it's just, 
it just I cry out in my heart to say, what can I do? You know, whatever little something that I can do, what is it that I can do? Can I talk to them? Can I so that 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 pulls me, that's the passion that I have. In terms of health wise, I try to balance my time. I make time for my my, my family to have some quiet time with the, my children. Um, and I am a grandmother as well, so with their grandchildren. Mm -hmm. I like last weekend I spent with my grandchildren too much. And also I in terms of personal, I also do some I walk, I walk. I, I do some walking around. And when walking also it helps me, I reflect and think and all that. So I, I I kill two birds with one stone. So when I'm walking, I'm also thinking, I'm reflecting, I'm looking at the nature and saying, okay, how is it this environment and all that. So that's 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 that helps me to, you know, to just be healthy. And of course I'm a Christian. So I mm -hmm. I also still spend a lot of time praying and reading the Bible. I've read the mm -hmm. Bible a couple of times from Genesis to Revelations. <laughs> So I enjoy that as well. Mm -hmm. I enjoy listening to that. I mean, to the, now I've got a, a, an audio one, so I enjoy listening to that sometimes oh. when I'm working. Yeah. So it, it yeah, I, th those are some of the things that just, you know, help me to just balance my life. Thank you. And when you, and do you ever have times when it all gets a bit much and, or, you know, you talked about never giving up on your dreams. Do you ever... Do you ever have times when you think, oh, it's getting a bit hard now. It's, there's a lot um, that I'm, I'm doing and it's and it isn't all your responsibility. I know that you feel passionate about it. You know, do you ever have those moments? And if you do, what do you do about that? Yeah, well, um, <laughs> I think one of the times that I recall that I did, he said, am I, is, is this okay? Is, am I good, Chris, when they, I was asked to, to be a vice chancellor of two universities. That's it's fantastic. crazy enough to have yeah. to, to be a vice chancellor of one university. Later on, too, I said, oh my goodness me, what should, and it was the government that, were, that asked me to do that because they needed this other one to be transformed. It was a college, so they wanted to be transformed into a full-fledged university, Kwame Nkrumah University. Plus, I was vice chancellor of Murungush University, then they also wanted me to be uh, vice chancellor of Kwame Nkrumah University. That was hectic. I was mm -hmm. like, okay. Um, I deflected. I went into prayer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I said, God, I need your strength. Mm -hmm. And then I said, wait a minute. We can do this. I just, you know, I just, we can do this. I called my team. I said, look, we have got this, uh, my, my management team, you know, and oh, I said, we have got this challenge. We have to do. We, we have. We have been asked to do this, and I really believe that if we sit down together, and we strategize how best we can do it, we can be able to. Do, we're given three years. I said actually they have given us three years to transform that university, which means we have, We all have got to be managers of two universities in for three years. So can we cut it down? I even went away. So can we cut it down? Can we make sure that we transform that university within two years and get out of there? <laughs> <laughs> so. Can we can we can we rather burn the midnight candle and you know finish off and come back home and mm -hmm. and we agreed. You will be surprised, you know, just involving everybody that you work with, all people around you, especially in the organizations, listening to them, getting the ideas and their input and everything, talking together, shared mm -hmm. that shared leadership. You'll mm -hmm. be surprised how much strength you'll have. Mm -hmm. If you play God over people's lives, you never succeed. Mm -hmm. If you pray a, a team, you are a team prayer, you succeed. So I did not say whether you like to what what you, I said. What do you think? When we do this, then we started saying, hey, "I think we can." And then we said, "You know, ideas started coming up, and together as a team, because I, I governized the resources that I had, human resources that I had, and we, we I shared. We, I met. I, I just drew them into that vision that they could also see." that the, the better part of us finishing it sooner than later and also doing it and what it would enable us later on like talking to you now that look what we did mm -hmm. that kind of gave us the passion so when you look back we'll say look at what we achieved we thought it was impossible but actually it was possible as Mandela would say would put it you know it all seems impossible until it's done so <laughs> yeah. yeah so so that's what I that's what help, how, helps me in every situation I always um, I don't have that me, I and myself. I always have the we and whoever I have around me and you know, I'm, I'll, I'll, I can get ideas from anyone, whether that person is a cleaner 
or any point, it doesn't matter. They, they can always add something to, to, to your life. So um, it, that helps me, that has helped me a lot to respect everybody for who they are and to respect their ideas. And if I, if I don't I agree with them, I, I don't say, I don't, I, your, your idea is stupid. No, I say, let's interrogate that. Let's see, how can that idea work? What about if we did it this way? So we, we all participate in that. That has helped me a lot in, in terms of, you know, um, when I've got a crisis and not knowing what to do, you know, you know, listening to other people, getting their ideas talking and, and going forward. But with me, my inner strength has been, I think my, my work with Jesus has helped me a lot at a personal level. <laughs> oh, that is amazing. So that, you know, you are amazing. And, you know, so all the things you said, are, you know, established leadership, um, you know, research proven leadership techniques, all of the things you said, asking people, galvanizing the team, talking about success and celebrating success. You know, I, I probably, when you were talking, I was thinking, oh yeah, you know, I remember reading that in that, in that, in that textbook and that. So these are all leadership techniques and what you've managed to do is to do that to, you know, there's strength in other people, isn't there? And there's things that you can do together. And it's not just about you. So you have the passion, you have the drive, but also you have the leadership, which is what you talk about, the rare leadership to get things done. So I really, really love that. Thank you so much um, for that. How do people get hold of you? If they want to work with you, want to hear more about your work, and what's the best way to contact you, Dr. Lucy? Well, there's a, uh, my, my, I've got the email on the website. Also mm -hmm. on my other emails, H, it's, it's very easy, H, Ngambi, H, my first name, and mm -hmm. Ngambi, my surname, at gmail.com. So it's H, Ngambi, at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. um, they can also get me at, you know, on my business one, uh, as well on the area. But the, all those are there. They, they, they are on my, um, on the website, on the website, on the Mteparea website, which is www mteparea.com so it's very Brilliant. easy as well yeah it's just mteparea.com yeah so they I will can put also all get of those details. on the website and you're also yes. on LinkedIn and um, you've got a Facebook page as well so Dr Lucy it has been an absolute pleasure have you got something to leave the audience with like an actionable tip that they can go away with and reflect about all the things that we've talked about today you know, love just was those things, believe in yourself, you know, never give up on your dreams. Um, if you fall down, whatever happens, you know, you shake it off, step on it and move on and just be rare. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Dr. Lucy. It's been an absolute pleasure to have you. I've learned a lot and it's been really wonderful to hear about all of your work. That's Thank it for you. the Don Darby show today. And if you like what you heard, please like, share, subscribe and comment below. And we'd really love to hear what you think about us. And that's it today. And we'll see you next time. Take care. Bye bye.